Okay. Well, we are back for part three of the chat with Vic Wayne. And wait a minute, we have an empty square. We just have a sign that says DJ Gidget Woody Radio. Vic, where did Gidget go? Dale Cooper. Literally, literally. She didn't bring Dale Cooper in. Wow. <laughs> I, love, um, I love how she doesn't call him Dale. Cooper. <laughs> it's Dale Cooper. Right, right. Well, I don't know. It's, not, it's like PE class. You get called by your last name. I think seventh grade, first time I got called by my last name any, by anybody, I thought, man, I'm in the military now or something. It was just PE, but you know, might as well <laughs> do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> give me 20. Get down and give me 20. Let's get yeah, right. And 20 what? But I, I don't know. <laughs> and Gidge is back. Go. Yay. Back. We got, we got concerned. Gotta go let Dale Cooper in because he had like escaped to the Black Lodge, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I'm honored that you guys wanted to take this to a, a round three. That's uh... we haven't we haven't done any given three, three in a row to anybody. No, wow. it's a first. <laughs> wow. Well, I better I better show off my T-shirt a little here because yes. I don't think that made it on. Because remember when we when I showed it to you guys, we weren't on air. So right, that is a good looking shirt. Actually, that is an awesome fact. shirt designed by Boris. Boris. Yeah, and I actually have a secret weapon one too. Yes. Um, so now I just need a Gidget one to get it to make the triumvirate of uh, t-shirts yes. and, and I will go on. It's on the same red bubble or whatever it's called that I can order it. Same. Yeah. Yes. Red bubble. Is it red bubble? I think red bubble. There. I think. Yeah. 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 I guess I should know that. Okay. Go I'm going to show off my star collector swag. Nice. You brought your, I button. need star collector swag. Okay. I'll, I'll send you something when we're off air. I'm, I'm happy to uh, you bring it over. Well, <laughs> to your empty walk. house, your empty mansion, me, you, and Dale <laughs> Cooper getting a little uh, naughty. Um, uh, if, you, if you go outside and like look in my windows, I might like throw a bowling ball in your face. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> ah! um, I, yeah, just so you know, Mike, and this is no, no lie. Ever since I got this, I think I've worn it almost every Tuesday since. Wow. Because I'm honored. Street comp we got that. So we got that streak going. Mike's played us every Tuesday for 22 weeks. Wow. Are you serious? Serious. It doesn't I know even I hear it every Tuesday. One. I listen at work and he usually plays it while I'm still listening. But it's been 22 already. And, and that, I do my you know, reports. Like, when you think about that, that's pretty amazing. That's like five months. Yeah, you're I like have Woody swag, but it's on the back of my laptop. Oh, it's gonna oh, yeah. not. I we'll never see it this way. After. We'll literally never see it on this show. Well, unless there's a record around. adapter, and it says DJ Gidget Woody Radio. Love it, I love it. Every, I, I'm all about that record adapter. A spider is what yes. it's called. Yep. Spider. You right. know where I learned that? Yeah. I learned that from the folks in Texas because I said, "Hey, how did you name Spider Pop Records?" And they said, "Really." You don't know our logo is a spider. <laughs> I said, "Oh, you know, I'm." Yeah, it took a while. Yeah, that was. I'm all about those spiders. <laughs> yeah, one of my all-time favorite radio, songs. Not, not Boris recognizing the, the Canadian Boris. stuff right off. It's like, duh. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I have a box ah. of record adapters up there. I carry a record record adapter in my purse that somebody special gave to me. You know, I'm weird. I have very sentimental things that I like that I save. I save a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Save things from weird places that I've been and then I go back and look at it. It's nice. I'm yeah. weird like that. Yeah, yeah it's very nice. I'm, restaurants. I, I, I get, I'm a bit of a collector too. Like I like to have memorabilia. Well, you collect I, stars. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. You got there first, Gidget. <laughs> yeah. yeah, geez, again, you know, I, you think I would have twigged to that one a bit sooner. Than... <laughs> it's a know. great name. Thank you. Well, you know, I can't was, take credit for it. It's a monkey song, so. Yeah. yeah kind of monkeying around. Kind of I monkey saw the out. monkeys. I saw the monkeys in um, 1986, I think. Oh, really? Great. That was the Great this America thing? Yeah. In, in San Jose. See, there's a band that had the original four members for a lot of years, you know, the prefab but, four. But some of those guys came and left over time oh. and then they'd come yeah, back. Yeah, Mike like... was not in the band when I saw them at Great America. Right. Uh, and Peter Tork was out for a while. Guys. And Oh, yeah. well, I think the Revere and the Raiders guys were all the same. But you just wouldn't know because they're all in costumes. Yeah, maybe. I don't know enough about their history to, to comment the on that Bee Gees. one. But... The Bee Gees were together forever with the yeah. original members. Well, yeah. totally you can't exactly died. go out and make another brother. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, I got one 
Blue not Man legally, group. at least. Yeah, no, not legally. <laughs> Blue Man Group, they're all the same, or at least <laughs> from what we can tell. Yeah. And, and, and what about um uh, the Jefferson Starship? But they were the same people until they started to drop dead, right? <laughs> <laughs> They were Jefferson airplane, airplane Jefferson Starship, that, the Starship. And memories. I don't know. I mean, there's way too much acid going on to know if any of the guys in the dead were all the same. Right, right. They yeah. kept losing keyboard players. Their keyboard players would keep dying on them. Well, just as long as Vic doesn't join Spinal Tap, I guess we're okay. Right. <laughs> Exploding well, drummers. Well, but I'm not a drummer anymore, so uh, it, okay. would be, it would be someone else. But, Good uh, <laughs> self-preservation move. <laughs> somebody i mean bands just come and go yeah and well I, our members come and go you know like that's the thing that's why you know again why i brought up you too because it still floors me that they got together in the late 70s and there's yeah. four guys in 2021 I mean, so, and woody you know, radio is the same thing like a band we have members that come and go like that's wrong woody, <laughs> <laughs> woody radio woody radio yeah. members that come yeah. and go yeah yeah <laughs> Let's start over. That's right. <laughs> reboot, <laughs> reboot. <laughs> um, but we've had um, we've had a couple DJs that have been with us since the beginning, other than me. And how how long ago was the beginning? Fourteen years. Oh, it's been going since two thousand seven. Fourteen years last June. June so Guardian January. Demon, he's got seniority. Yes, Guardian Demon came right after me. Um, I started with um, Amanda, who's DJ Loki. DJ Dave Fox was the first DJ. Um, then there was Guy, Glenn, Sean, Valor, um, and Maya. Maya was one of the first. My daughter. Oh. So, how, um, how, how and her, daughter? my daughter's 27 now. 27. She lives outside of San Francisco, where I grew up in Fremont. Like you were talking about the fields of Edmonton. I grew up across the street from one of those fields. It's now 40 million houses. Right. Yeah. Right. But it was fields that we played in and occasionally set on fire. <laughs> no, that's it wasn't nice. my fault. That's a nice, that's a nice thought. It's a nice... It wasn't my fault. You know, they wrapped hay bales when we were kids with like metal, like yeah. twine. Yeah. And we would build these big houses and then they would occasionally burn down because the sun would hit them. Oh, oh. Oh, so like it wasn't hay bale even... forts because we were Spons. kids who played outside in Malathion Spring. Oh, yeah, yeah. We used to put our skateboards at the top of the hay bales and just skate right off. Spontaneous combustion, though. Yeah, no, I mean yeah. that's it happens. I mean, you know, that's living on the West Coast, though. Mike grew up on the West Coast. He knows what it's like. He played oh, yeah. hay bales and playing the Malathion. Yep, and waiting for the next earthquake to come. Yep, right. They mm -hmm. had one a couple of weeks ago. They're they're good for it. We actually felt it in Sacramento. I was just talking with one of my friends at work about that. Say it was so mild here. You, in Sacramento, we don't really have any faults here in the Valley. We get other people's earthquakes. So we got, we get Sierra earthquakes or we get Bay Area earthquakes, but we, sometimes they're nice enough to share a little bit of residue with us. So we felt one two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. My brother lived in Loma Prieta and he moved to Sacramento because he never wanted to live near anything that looked like a mountain again. Yeah. And I was living in San Francisco. And, you know, you get earthquakes up there in Vancouver, not as many. Yeah. I mean, we, we had a tremor that was, uh, we did actually feel, I don't know, I can't remember exactly, maybe a year and a half ago. There but, was that uh, big one in um, 2001 in Seattle. Yeah, I was here in 2001, but I, I don't know if, I, oh, I, yeah, yeah. You know what? Yes, it was in the middle of the day. Yeah. In the I was in a big building right? in downtown Seattle mm. at a doctor visit for anxiety. Mm. Okay. And an earthquake hit. Oh, and oh next that's door was, well. At least you were with the doctor. Was the ADHD clinic. <laughs> of all the places to be, if you're with a doctor, I suppose that's you know. No, that... I was uh, getting ready to leave, and oh. it was an all glass building that they oh. had to tear down afterwards. It was pretty damaged. Wow. Okay. Oh man. But I do I remember the that. one you're talking about. I, I was actually uh, um, so for a number of years I worked for the you know in the states they have ASCAP, mm -hmm. and in yeah. Canada they have SOCAN. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Paul yeah. Williams thing. You, well, the ones that click the, yeah. you do the royalties, right? Right. And uh, so I worked for them for quite some time. And I was actually at my desk uh, when that earthquake hit. And I remember, you know, kind wow. of, holy, what, what the hell was that? And it was like right <laughs> in the middle of the day, like, I don't know, one in the afternoon, two in the afternoon or something, you know, and you're just sitting there doing your thing. You got your coffee or, you know, in your computer, whatever you're, you know, what doing. And then suddenly the whole thing goes, mm. and you're like, 
and you're not used to, I mean, I don't know. I wasn't used to it. I don't know. I only been they never life. schedule those at opportune times, do they? No, it was the day true. after Mardi Gras. Should be and checking somebody, with us, shouldn't they? Somebody had gotten killed at Mardi Gras, and they, mm. they said that the mayor of Seattle has so powerful with God that he was able to schedule an earthquake to get everybody on another subject. Oh, the yeah. only thing bad that happened in that earthquake, Seattle and Vancouver are such tough cities, I guess maybe because they're in between mountains and water and all that. The only thing that happened is the Starbucks mermaid fell, the Seattle chocolate building, all the bricks fell off of it. The mm. Phoenix underground was damaged, but it had just been bought by the guy from Northern Exposures and he wasn't a Seattle person. So maybe that's his fault. And then the Capitol building was damaged. Mm. And um, and um, some cat had a heart attack. I mean, oh jeez. I mean, really, it was not. And Vancouver had a little bit of damage, like near the Peace Arch. They had to close mm -hmm. the Peach Arch for like a day or so oh, because okay. there was damage at the arch. Well, aren't they <laughs> more into volcanic eruptions up there more so than earthquakes? They just like to scare you guys so you guys don't come up. It's worked yeah, so far, yeah. And yeah, we make movies like Dante's Peak so people don't move to the Northwest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, that experience I just described would, would probably be the one that I, the one that I only want I really remember of any of those types of things, except for a couple of years ago when I did feel one in our home. Uh, you know, the upstairs kind of started to shake just ever so slightly, but it was enough to know that, you know, you'd, it's pretty weird when you're, you feel like your whole house is actually moving. Mm. Yeah, kind of freaky, but uh, but those are probably the two that I remember my in my whole life living in this part of the world. So you know, yeah, it probably is just a bit of a fear tactic. But you know, we just we just like tell people in San Francisco, you know, hey, you know, if it's four or under, we don't care. Get over it, move on. Yeah. But in Seattle, we tell everybody it rains all the time, and we have volcanoes, so they don't move there. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work though. That ploy still didn't work. No, because everybody moved to Seattle. It's really weird because right. I left what fifteen years, thirteen years ago. And I haven't looked back. I wanted to move to Vancouver, but it was after 9-11 and right. it was really, a, really hard to move into a foreign country then. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it was getting harder for us to just go across the border. I watched a family um, have their car taken apart. They were in like a Ford LTD. Oh. And they were probably, have you ever seen that movie Foul Play? You know, when they take the, the little Korean family and they're in the backseat going, Kojak, bang, bang, Kojak, bang, bang. The, the couple looked like that and they had their whole entire car taken apart. And I'm like, oh. why are they harassing this little couple just trying to get into America? And next Terrible. thing you know, they take the bottom part out of the car and like three people get out. Oh. And they, it was so just the... getting so tight at the border after 9-11 yeah. that, you know, those people could have just went across and nobody would even thought, all you had to do is walk down to the Peace Arch and walk across. Right. Mm -hmm. For the dogs to shift Harrison. them out. Go to well, what's that town over which to go to Harrison? Um, Belling, not Bellingham. Uh, when you go and you're going in the middle and Abbotsford. Oh, Abbotsford. You can yeah. get across really easy there. The only thing I've ever had taken away from me in any of the years that I've been to Vancouver was a bottle of wine. Hmm. It was I called Rotten one, Grape. I remember one time we had, uh, I mean, going across the border can be tricky for bands too, right? Right. You're, you know, unless you've got all the papers and to get the paper, that sort of stuff, like, you know, get getting papers that allow you to go down there legally is ridiculous amount of money, like way more than you'll mm -hmm. ever make at the show. Mm -hmm. So bands just don't pay for it. They just sneak across. I mean, both ways. Yeah. So, get borrow instruments of your friends when you yeah, get there. Yeah, borrow what you can or, or, you know, luckily for me, I was a dual citizen. So I was able to, I had a Nexus pass and a dual citizen and I could just get through, you know, they would just say, oh, oh are you a citizen? I'd say, yep, here's my, my passport. And they just let me through. So I could take stuff in the trunk and never get asked, but now I can't. But um, I remember one time back in, uh, this would be like in the dear God days. So this is like the nineties. I remember we had a big truck full of stuff and we had all the stuff. I don't know what we were thinking, but we had all our gear with us. And somehow we got down there without getting stopped. Wow. But on the way back, they wanted, they had to go and search the whole thing. And, and 
all they took, we didn't, nobody got fined or anything. And we didn't get any, in any trouble for being, you know, having musical instruments. The only thing that happened is that our bass player smoked and they kept his like carton of Marlboros or something <laughs> that he bought. Cause you can't get those here. Right. Uh-huh. And that was, uh, that was all. But of course we were delayed sitting there waiting for, you know, two hours while they unloaded mm-hmm. our whole truck and then reloaded it and all that shit. So yeah, the only but, time I got uh, delayed was another car. And when we got through it, they wanted to know if we had anything to declare. And my nephew said, I got some boogers. <laughs> <laughs> he was Let him the you're you're good <laughs> yeah he declared it ass <laughs> he's like holding his fingers up like uh, this. now i didn't say that here. because you can get kicked off the air for saying that word you know the b word booger yeah booger. remember wkrp oh that's right <laughs> so we gotta edit that part out Ooh, you said the, the b word oh my god we are wkrp really woody radio really is <laughs> we are we are in so many good ways yeah he's <sighs> He's our, our last nestman. Who's Herb? Who's Herb? Herb Charles? would probably be Boris. No. See, I, I don't want to be less. That's so funny. Like, I know what Mike no, looks like, TC's and I knew what you looked like, but Boris doesn't put his freaking picture on <laughs> any of the social media. He's got that mummy thing going. Oh, you know what? I don't know what he looks like. You know what? One time, Gidget sent me a picture. She went and visited Boris, and there's another musician that went and saw a show, and she sent me this picture, and I said, that's a great picture. Who are they? Though? She says, well, this guy here, you should know him. It's Boris. I said, I've never seen him before. He really is the man of mystery. How many years has he worked at Woody? Um, 12. 12 years. Jeez. 12 years. Yeah, well, I got to. And he's the he other like owner. These days. Yeah, I knew. I kind of knew that. I think he told me that because, uh, you know, the same way that Mike and I go back and forth on direct messaging yeah. for us and I do too. And um, but uh, but I've never actually asked him for a picture because, you know, that might be a little. <laughs> Boris, There's a funny story. I just get a picture of you, please. I, I, I'll tell a story. Like He'll probably get mad at me for this, but I'll tell you a story about that, him not having a picture. And I laugh okay. at him all the time for this. Right. I, I'm, I'm stealing creative liberties here. He went to see Elaine Boozler okay. and he knocked on her door and they've been Facebook friends for years, but he had a picture of himself as Travis Bickle. Oh, okay. And <laughs> on she Facebook said, or whatever. she says to him, I don't know. I thought you were black. <laughs> he goes, he goes, why would you think that? Well, your picture. That's fucking Travis Bickle. Right. Al- <laughs> Robert De Niro. <laughs> yeah. She didn't, I mean, he shows up and she didn't realize it was Boris. And she's looking at him like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> what what does he look like? Can you give me even the slightest hint? Is he like tall, short? Um, I personally tall, think he looks look- like Greg Kinn. Oh, yeah. yeah. Probably kick me for saying that, though. He's kind of got like spiky hair or had spiky hair. Like a hair. cockatiel on the top. Huh. Okay. And how and is he kind of like 50s? Yeah, older. 60s. He's an old man with a cane. No, he's, he's yelling got a at good, people to get off the lawn. He's got a good uh, quick wit, though. I, I very yeah, quick. He's one of the funniest uh, yeah. people I know. Yeah, we, we have lots of fun. Like pretty much every time he posts his uh, top. Mm-hmm. 20 we always start back and forth on some ridiculous yep. you know thing but uh, it's good fun yeah oh one of these days off where does he live right outside of chicago chicago yeah so got i love yeah, when he pops. i'm sure i'll meet mike long before i'll meet you guys then because <laughs> chicago is like you know pretty far away sacramento that's just down the coast i'm one going to see days. mike i see mike probably more than i've seen anyone else i mean yeah. and it's been in two person? years in person yeah we've met twice in person and it'll happen again my parents. You know, oh. yeah it'll happen again in october in the fall yeah my my yeah. daughter lives with my parents she takes care of them she's an rn and um so i go out but because of covid i haven't been out in two years mm. but the last time i was out i went and saw mike and the time before that i went and saw mike and mike's been to fremont it's an hour and 45 minutes yep okay nice and he knows oh, my okay. friends yep and i like brought family. donuts or but you know what? He's never met my daughter. As no. much as he's talked to her, he's never seen her in person. Yet he's that met is... my cousin. Right. I, I think that's going to change pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. Because my cousin is not, I didn't grow up with her. She's my cousin by adoption. Mm. And she's been on his show. And so she sat in his studio. She's in a band. She is in the band Great Bitter Lake, formerly known as Forest, the band. So Haley Hay. Okay, yeah, yeah. I don't know them. She's but. incredibly talented. Just graduated from Berkeley College of Music in Boston. I found cool. my birth so, family and I'm like, whoa, that's where the music came from. Uh, there we go. So you have you have three kids, Gidget? Two boys and a girl? Three. And how many do you have? Uh two boys. Two boys. Yeah, no Julian girls? And, 
no, no girls, two boys. Yeah, Julian and Miles. That's Miles. The, uh, Miles is name. one of the names we thought of for Dylan, but I really wanted Walter. <laughs> we thought of Miles, wanted Walter, got Dylan. Yeah. Okay, so Dylan <laughs> happened because when I was in labor, I was reading the uh, the Dylan Thomas poetry book. Gotcha. And I was really enamored of the story of him laying on his wife's lap. Oh, that's nice. Drunk off his ass. Oh, not so nice. It was nice. And I thought that was the cutest thing ever. (laughs) Yeah, it is nice. And I thought Dylan is a good name because we can call him Dill and Maya wanted a Dill Pickle. We didn't know at the time, though, she really was naming him after some little kid on this monkey show on Disney. Uh, Ah, twins. Right. Dylan and Cole Sprouse. Yes, my kids used to watch that show when it was on. I remember that. And how old are your kids? My older son is 24 and my Mm -hmm. younger son is 20. Okay, mine are 14, 17, and 27. Okay, wow. so yours are on both. Your oldest is older than mine, and your youngest or younger two are younger. Yeah. So Dill is the youngest. He doesn't go by yeah. Dylan. He goes by Dill Mars. Dill Mars. Cool. He has a rock star name. I'll yeah, have to know that cool. next time. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And Mike, you don't have kids, right? I do. I do. Um, oh, do you? I have you, one you son. Mentioned to me. One son and two stepkids, and my son is Spencer and. When we were, um, when my ex was uh, pregnant, um, you know, she said, Chloe, if it's a girl, I said, God, I hope it's a boy then. Um, although I now know a Chloe who I really like. And, and so I do like the name now, but I thought I, I hope mind. it's a boy. I said, I'm thinking either Spencer or Fernando. And I knew that she would never go with Fernando because I really wanted Spencer. So we got Spencer. Yeah. All right. And There's where did Spencer come like from? Too. That's a good name. Where did he come from? Uh, he came from, well, no, I mean, I know where when a boy and a girl love each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, no, he's from Chicago originally. He lives in Las Vegas now. It's a whole circuitous. No, no, no. I mean, the part. name is it like Spencer Davis? Oh no, I just liked it. I just thought it's a cool Spencer name. I... For hire, right? Um, well, you know, it's funny. Um, you know, that's S- that's S P E and S E R, and my son is S P E and C E R. But I was kind of another one of these things where you just don't pick up on what somebody's saying. You know, when I told one of my one of my friends that I named him um, Spencer, he goes with a C or an S. I think, well, who names their kid? Capenser, C P E N C E R. <laughs> it's like, of course, it's an S. And how old, how old is Spencer? From? Oh, I was just how, how old? Oh, he's twenty five, yeah. and I, right. I just love, I love the name. I just always thought it was a cool name. Mm-hmm. Now, with the name Miles, did you get that from Miles Davis? Or? No, you get asked that almost every time, though, which makes sense, being that I'm because I get Dylan, all, but, Bob but, Dylan. Yeah, Dylan. yeah, no, just uh, it was just a name that we both really liked. And, uh, you know, when you're doing names, as you both probably know, it's that whole thing. It's almost like a process of elimination. You come up with like five or 10 that you really like. And then it's like one person likes it. And the other one's like, oh, no, I there was a guy that ate glue in my school. Or, <laughs> you know, I, this girl broke my heart. So we can't name our daughter that or whatever it is. Right. And then um, you, but, uh, we both love Julian right off the top. I was a huge John Lennon fan. And my wife had a crush on some French kid named Julian from when she was now, did you go with the French spelling with the I E N? No, again? we didn't. We went with the I E N. We went with the I E N. Okay. Still sounds nobody's like mentioned in this whole conversation. Nobody's brought up Julian Cope. I mean, that's really important too. Yeah. That, well, that's... I'm a huge Julian Cope fan, as you know. I mean, I even quoted him and rip it off, right? Yes. Yes. Um, world shut your mouth. Yeah. 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 But uh, and but... Gidget had had me quote him one time too. Okay. Oh yeah, Reed head detector. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Miles, I, I really love the name Miles. There's a singer that I really enjoy named Pat. Um, um, Mar- oh my God, Worth is going to hit me for this. <laughs> From Yikes, Pat McCurdy. Oh, Pat McCurdy, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've and seen his, his name on Miles and Julie. I don't know his music, but I've seen that name on Boris's charts like yeah. for the last couple of months. <laughs> I drew a blank there for a minute. And he's such a nice guy. And we were talking about how we both have sons named Julian, and his sons mm. are Julian and Miles. Oh, wow. That guy's sons are named Julian wow. and Miles? Yes. Oh, okay, I gotta, I gotta. That's too kismet. I gotta meet that guy. Yeah, I gotta, and um, I really like the name Milo, but nobody would go yeah. with Milo because of the beverage. Or so because I said, well, of Planet of the Apes. Milo. The what? Or because of Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Doctor Milo. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> My son Julian, he's autistic, and he had a doctor that looked like um the the little doctor. Uh, I can never remember her name. Oh, Zira. Zira, yeah. He had a doctor that looked like her. And oh, I used to go funny. in the office and I'd have a really hard time looking. She was his neurologist. And she right. was like four foot ten and looked like that. Oh, oh, my oh wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, I loved Planet of the Apes when I was a kid, man. 
Yeah, yeah. I had a Planet of the Apes playset, you know. Yeah, those, 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 and, or the, and those like uh, G.I. Joe type dolls are about this big yeah. and they were Planet and of the Apes. And my Apes. Barbies would go in and the, the apes would tie her up. And... <laughs> well, it sounds like there's a story in there. <laughs> I was very, yeah. I was the youngest out of all of the kids in my family. because My parents waited like 11 years to adopt me. So mm. um, I had no one to play with. And they would buy me pets and we would eat them. And that's a totally other story. I had a chicken and they told me not to get attached. Or the oh, clams that we used to fish for. That's not a pet thing. I, I, just had an I just immediately had a vision of a cat or something. I'm like, no, 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 no not the cat. Ooh, Thank goodness. I, didn't, I wasn't allowed those Maybe kind of pets because my parents were allergic to them. Yeah. My mom was. I finally got a cat when I was eight. So, but um, I was a very lonely child who had a lot of weird toys. Hmm. My evil Knievel, I still have my evil Knievel. I still wow. have my Captain America doll. Nice. Um, I oh, had, you were saying you don't you like to collect things and not not get rid of them, so it's cool that you still have yeah, some of that stuff. I have um I had a thing for comic books when I was a kid, and I mm -hmm. still have a Me lot too. of them. Me too. I got trunks full down down there with when you grow up in an area where there's dust. not a lot of kids and you have a bike. You ride your bike to the closest liquor store and buy comic books. Mm -hmm. And yes, it was a liquor store. You know, I was visiting in LA not too long ago. My brother and I took a trip to our old favorite liquor store, which in those days was a convenience store, right? I got baseball cards, comic books, sodas, Funyuns from the liquor mm -hmm. store. This time we actually bought liquor. You know, <laughs> coming back, you know, 30 years later as adults, we actually went to the store for its actual purpose. <laughs> I had so many, you know, I, all of the names we thought of for my kids, except for Julian, which Julian came from, you know, every cool kid named Julian imagine. It was also my mm -hmm. husband's grandfather. But, oh, you know, okay. along the lines of Julian So there Lennon, was a familial you know. thing there, yeah. yeah right, yeah. and um, everything else came from comic books. I fought hmm. tooth and nail to get my daughter a comic book name, and they were, every single one of them, Veronica was vetoed, because she's a bitch in the comics. <laughs> Sabrina, vetoed because she's a witch. Um, uh, <laughs> but she was a nice Betty, witch, wasn't she? Nobody names children Betty. No, um, <laughs> no, that was my grandmother's name, that's, yeah. It's no my mother's name, name yeah. And you know, Jughead, you just don't name children Jughead or Jughead. Oh, that would have been awesome. I wanted I know, that as a nickname. It? When I was in junior high school, I wanted that to be my nickname. I couldn't wow. really make it stick. And it's really? probably just as well. Yeah. You look like you could be a Jughead, though. Could be. But I, Try. I, Mike knows this. I secretly, so my daughter's name is Maya. And everyone goes, well, you didn't get a comic book there. No, actually, I did. Well, one, she was also on my, my lunchbox from Space 1999. But, um, I was reading a book, um, My Neighbor Totoro, and the little girl's name was May, and I thought Maya would be cool, and then I just happened to be watching Adventures in Babysitting. Now, her name was Parker up until a week before she was born, because Parker could have been a boy or a girl in Peter, mm -hmm. and I was watching Adventures in Babysitting, and this little girl with thorn hair things, and her real name was Maya, and everyone was fighting me to the nail about the whole comic book thing, so I took the name May, and I said, Maya, the little girl's name is Maya, and she likes Thor. And there was her That's name. And nobody knew for like years. I didn't admit to anybody that she's the little girl who likes Thor. So mm -hmm. secretly, I got my comic book. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, it's just like, I'm just a nerd. I am a big nerd. I work at, we used to have a Woody radio booth at Comic Cons out here. That's right. Wow. Okay. Because I'm a nerd. Yeah. I judge the cosplay contest. I, there's a picture of me on my Facebook dressed like Velma. Yep. I did B Girl as a cosplay once. Oh yeah, B Girl wow. from um, Blind Melons. Yep. Video, yep. yeah. B Girl. Yeah. I'm a nerd, so we well, can all go do nerd things together. Because I have a feeling you comic books, Mike comic books. Yeah. Come uh, on, be the cool dad. Your kids will be so excited. Yeah, you know my kids showed no interest in that stuff. You know I have this big card collection with hockey cards and baseball and basketball, and I got all these comic books and stuff. They didn't show, show Hardy Boy books, like all that kind really? of stuff. That, yeah, mm -hmm. and they had no interest. Well, my in boys love Nancy Drew. They didn't do the Hardy Boys like me. They wanted Nancy Drew. Yeah, my guys. Well, not the no youngest. The youngest one is a nerd. Uh, is a different kind of nerd, but mm. they're into anime. Yeah, no, I'm not, I mean maybe. Oh, that's also your your younger ones, probably right. No, the seventeen. Well, he's also autistic, so it's kind of. Yeah, but they're yeah. Uh, significantly younger than mine too. Like, is your older one into that? Oh yeah. She's, what? She's oh, she was cosplayer. into anime. Oh, she is. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I, she's yeah, a big that, Star that... Wars fan. Yeah. Okay. Well, fair enough. Yeah. She's... Nobody names their boys Darth anymore. I don't. I don't get that. Why not? <laughs> Darth. 
That'd be a great name. Totally. She wanted to name my youngest um, Gus Gus. Hmm. What? What name? Gus Gus from Cinderella. Oh, oh. I don't remember. She, we, I said, Gus find Gus. a pop culture name that you like. Gus Gus. Oh, goodness. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't even know that character. He's a little mouse in Cinderella. Mm. Oh, yeah. okay. that's a deep dive. It is yeah. a deep dive. Yeah, oh. but oh, I've, I... I've got nerds for children. You raise them well. Yeah. Now my daughter turned out pretty good looking though too. So, you know, oh. I'm not... A <laughs> good looking nerd. There you go. Yeah. The, the perfect combo. Well, I'm married to one, so that works really well too. <laughs> yeah. And your, your wife is wonderful. She is wonderful. We got to see Vic's wife. Yeah, geez. Um, you made her up. No, I definitely didn't. Um, <laughs> you want me to go see if I can find a picture? Hold up. Be right back. You talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> okay, so while Vic is gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got shorts on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this has been fun. This this has been our um, longest chat to date. Did he come back with clothes on? Yeah, he put them on. <laughs> oh, well. Can't have everything. Go, what did they talk about right yeah he's listening he's listening he can hear us now oh yeah were you uh were you, were you saying we were some talking shit? about your your butt oh well that that can't be good um we watched you walk out yeah sorry uh, that you know what he wants to see that on, on <laughs> uh, um yeah so i don't know if you can see that but oh my oh, gosh nice. she's so cute yeah I think this is probably about, I want to say, seven or eight years old, but it's all I could find at short notice. But she's you guys very, very cute. Definitely yeah, look gorgeous. like you belong together. Great couple. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, she's wow. uh, she's a good one. Yep. And she supports you with everything that you do, and she's given you wonderful kids. Yes, and, and she's uh, got a very successful business, too. So, um, yeah, she's, That's good. she's got it all. Hey, so you, she's got it all and me. <laughs> and you. <laughs> and do you work outside of this, Vic? Do you have to have a job at like the white spot still? No, I don't have to work there anymore. But so I did work for those, uh, for the copyright folks for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then just, you know, one day they, my department got eliminated. Mm. Just, mm. You know, not, yeah, exactly. Did Paul Williams so. eliminate you? <laughs> Are you talking about little Paul Williams, the little yeah. singer that did He's the president the of ASCAP. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. So that's, uh, yeah, they don't, they don't share any kind of board or anything. So uh, <laughs> I, that's right. But I was like, Phantom of the Paradise, is that who she's referring to? Yes. He's my hero, you know. Okay. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah, he's. But he is the president of ASCAP and he tried to shut us down. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. We were yeah. shut down for a little while, but oh, we okay. still love him because he's perfect. And oh. he's like my celebrity crush. Okay. He's, wow. yeah, yeah, weird. He's, I, I did love that movie as a kid. I, I might be taller than him, but not by much. Oh, I'm, yeah, he's tiny. He, <laughs> Michael Fox, he makes Michael J. Fox look tall. So, um, so where, where are we talking about? Oh, yeah. So, um, so that was that. And then, uh, so now, right now, I'm actually just finishing up another degree. I think I mentioned this to you on the, uh, before we were on the air that um, I'm doing a, a degree in social work. That's great. Good. Really so, great. Um, that's my that. line of work. I'm in. Um, oh. I'm a DSP, direct uh, service provider for disabled adults. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, that's so cool. Good for you. Yeah, I, I mean, it's kind of second career for me. You know, it's it's my but, second career. I started it after COVID. I um, after my son was living in a place for kids with autism, I yeah. noticed there was a need for people who understood autism instead of yeah. people who just went in it to it for a job. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I do. I take care of adults with autism. Uh, that's amazing. I'm, I'm, it's doesn't yeah. pay, pretty wonderful, but it's a wonderful job and it's very rewarding. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I end up with scratches all over my arms, but you oh. know, but you'll get there once your degree's done. And but see, I don't have to have a degree. I'm on the lower end of the. I'm like shoved in the houses with them. Mm. I'm the one that spends the time with them and takes them places. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's great work. I mean, I I my. You know, I guess I, I come from a sort of a family of you know, my dad was a physician. He he passed away quite young, but um, he was a doctor. And my bro one of my brothers is a, is a doctor as well. Not the one that plays in the band with me. The other brother, <laughs> oh. although he's a musician too. Um, all all four kids in my family are musicians, actually, up to some degree. Wow. Um, yeah, my daughter's an RN, so I get it. Yeah. So there's a little bit of that. I think that thread that runs through somewhere. And and even though I didn't do that for the longest time. Um, 
you know, some stuff that went on uh, in my life over the last few years kind of led me to this. And Very nice. I don't like to usually go get into it in too much detail, but, um, you know, bring we'll it talk about and, it sometime. Yeah, it's nice know, that you're yeah. going to be helping out, though. That's really wonderful. Yeah, I have so much respect for social workers because they are. Thank you. They it's a very, very hard job and it's hard to keep people in that work. I hear that. They get disheartened. Yeah, and yeah. they get and they get exhausted. And we have and the worst, out, right? the worst system for disabled adults in America, mm. in North America, America. You know, not Canada. Mm. Canada at least treats them a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe that. And it's it's really it's hard still, to watch. Yeah, I, I yeah, I mean, I, I guess I I think I knew I knew that going in. I guess we'll see once. Uh, once I'm actually practicing for a while, but um, I'm just in the sort of in the thick of my very last practicum right now. Um, but yeah, we'll see. You know, I think, you know, something you said there really, you know, twigged, which is, you know, you went into it because you had a, a lived experience with it. And um, that's certainly been my uh, journey too. you know, the a good mm -hmm. portion of our game day album uh, is informed by that situation wow. so mm. um so even though you know it comes off pretty rocking and power poppy and all those things um if you actually sat down with the lyric sheet you'd probably uh be surprised it's pretty mm. heavy shit maybe that's why i resonate with it because i can feel it maybe i like songs with a vein yeah yeah well you Good mentioned putting it I, I was just gonna ask you that actually because you mentioned that even before we started this you said <clears> yeah i'm not really into the power pop thing so like if you were to just name three artists that you really do like obviously dylan's not one of them but what are what are you know wh where my does favorite your songwriter musical thing go? my favorite songwriter in the whole world is paul williams oh it is okay yeah and every okay, song so that he's written so who else might fit into that like randy newman like what what other kind no, of God, stuff no. i don't know i'm just trying um, to well, David Bowie. Okay. Oh, well, there we go. So I was, I was great to yeah. start off with that, wasn't I? Uh huh. <laughs> yep. I'm a big. I was wearing that shirt earlier today. Yeah, I've got one too. I'm wearing <laughs> it on the. I'm wearing it on the. Um, on our promo pick that goes out with like every promotion. Yeah, I had that nice. shirt on, and I changed to the Edward Gorey shirt. No, mm. I'm. I'm really into lyrics. Okay. Well, then, uh, you know, and when, I, I, and when I send I you the pin, I'll send you an album or two as well. And hopefully it'll... Uh... Everything I've heard, I've liked. Great stuff. Oh, thank you. Hey, we are down to less than three minutes. So I want to make sure before we head out that our listeners can find out where to find out more about Star Collector and pick up some of the Star Collector albums. Sure. So uh, our Bandcamp page and all the streaming services, Spotify, Amazon, Apple Music, they all have uh, the digital version. And the CD version is available through Cool Cat Music in New Jersey and Jam Records. Uh, where are they? Can't remember. North Carolina. I can't remember where they're based. Somewhere in the mm -hmm. States. Um, but they uh, do the hard uh, copy stuff. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's where you can get the stuff, and then you know you can also find like I mean, we mentioned at the beginning, you know we've got some videos that um, Steve had done. Uh, primarily, Steve does them; uh, he's our guitar player, and uh, they're all up on YouTube. So if people want to kind of get a quick snapshot of what we look like and sound like at the same time, you know I think we have like five official videos up there, and lots of live performance and TV stuff from. And I'll make sure by, that but... I put a whole list of links. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Do you because want me to send, been... send stuff to you or do you, do you just want to look it up or what would you prefer? Um, send it to me and I'll get yeah. to it tomorrow. I'm, like I said, it'll all be up on Saturday during Mike's show. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. It'll, it'll probably save you a bit of time if I just send you a. Yeah. Send me a list and I'll just copy paste it. Okay. I want to thank you for coming to us and um, <laughs> thank you, you for having me. Oh, so as were you. That was great fun. It thank you. Feel like, didn't even feel like a music interview. Just felt like a bunch of people sitting around shooting. That's what we want it to be. Exactly. Well, that's what it, that's awesome. what it was. And thank you, you so it. much. You are definitely part of the Woody family and we really mm. appreciate everything that you've done for us. 100%. And now I get to go to bed because it's my bedtime. <laughs> well, have a great sleep. And, and uh, just, you know, one more time, Mike, thanks for, you know, 22 weeks of uh, support. It's, it's in pretty unbelievable. And, you know, I, my pleasure. Yeah, uh, and Saturdays too. You play a lot of it. It's just you know, it really just is. It it gives it allows us to m maintain momentum, you know, over a longer period of time. Like someone said the other night, you know, like the album's got legs, and it's because of guys like you that have been just like appreciate devo that devoted to it. So it's great music, yeah. my pleasure, absolutely. Thank you, Thank you so much, both Take of care, you. Guys. Thank Thanks. you guys. Okay. Bye -bye. See you, Gidge.
See you guys.